Good morning. Welcome to ProMat 2023. My name is Aaron Jones, President and CEO of Bastion Solutions. And thank you so much for joining us this morning as we bring the future to you. We have a very exciting unveiling this morning and I'm so happy that you're here to join us. And standing next to me is Michael Markham. Michael is the leader of our autonomous vehicle team. And Michael and his group across the country have been working very hard on this new product. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Michael. Thank you, Aaron. I am so privileged to be able to introduce to you on behalf of Bastion Solutions Engineering and Technology Team, our new product, the CB18. This is a counterbalance. This is a counterbalance vehicle with an 1800 kilogram capacity. Uh, it has a, a fork mast reach of 14 feet, seven inches. And it has a lot of very well integrated safety features. Maybe one of my favorite things about this vehicle is that it's going to grow in its smartness over time. And we've engineered mechanically and electrically everything we need in the vehicle to make it smarter over time. So this introduction product will continue to grow in its ability to recognize its environment to adapt to its environment and do some pretty amazing things in the future. Things on our roadmap such as trailer loading and unloading and all kinds of very difficult tasks that we think this vehicle is well situated for. Mechanically, we've integrated a side shift that's one of the best in industry, 5.2 inches left and right. It has got really good tilting mechanisms, fork positioners, all the axes of motion that we need to accomplish what we need in the long term. We've tried to focus on things like standard pedestrian awareness, where you see the blue spots that are pretty industry standard among manually driven trucks. So we're trying to do that any direction that we're traveling. This will be really helpful when we're driving out of areas that might be darkened, like deep lane storage or any areas coming out of a trailer, giving people the awareness that it's going to be coming at them. Of course, we've turned the volumes down, but there's always um, the standard melody box we're honking the horn every time we move we have lighting that we can turn on and off as we go into dark spaces to make sure that others can have lighting to see where we're at as we're moving and other things we've done for safety is we've introduced uh, a, a focus on category three cantilevered load detection because we know with this mast traveling that there's the risk that we could catch something that's cantilevered so nick is going to demonstrate where it doesn't matter if it's maybe a door that's hanging down, maybe something that's sticking out from the racking, or maybe just a person that's reaching an appendage towards the vehicle. But it gives us the ability to sense uh, not only the, the, the potential, like here he's demonstrating a, a overhead door hanging down. And again, it'll recover automatically from these conditions and begin to run again. We're finding that, again, the traction is a key problem that you have to solve and by putting the traction by the mast when we pick up a payload and we get heavier we actually gain in traction gain in our ability to have good traction and be safe in those environments the speed of this vehicle in reverse with the forks trailing three meters per second with a full capacity and the maximum speed forks forward is going to be two meters per second but the forks do have to be in a very given condition, tilted back at a certain level before we're able to travel at full speed. We are working on stacking. Uh, stacking, uh, free stacking is the real difficult task, right? What, what's just out there in space. So we can do some sim simple stacking as long as the product is relatively stable and what we're stacking on is stable. But if it has high precision, like four posts, like metal pallets, that is extremely difficult. We're not there yet, but we can do simple stacking. How long will it potentially run? We estimate it at least 10 years, but it will, it will likely be even longer uh, just in, based on forklift industry standards. We know that if they're serviced and maintained, most of the parts can be replaced uh, and you know serviced. So they're really the chassis and the main key components of the vehicle uh, you might do some significant replacement, but it could potentially run 20 years, but for sure 10 years. Really, we don't have any limits to how large the fleet can be. The fleet manager 
we'll be able to independently talk to the vehicles. Uh, currently, it can be on a typical 2.4 or 5 gig Wi-Fi network. And back to the fleet manager, we don't really have a size limit that we know of, but uh, you know, the, the larger the fleet grows, the more complexity grows. So you got to be careful that you don't get too much complexity in your system. But one thing that we didn't mention, if you go around to the back of the booth, our mini loads or our other type of vehicles, they can all operate in the same fleet manager, same environment, using the same map as the CB18 because the navigation is at floor level. We're navigating based off the safety scanners down at that low level at your, around your ankle height. So we can share the map between large vehicles like this and small vehicles that are low to the ground. They can share the same environment. We've tested it with our own AMRs, uh, laying it, you know, putting pallets on and off of those. The interaction is quite good. The precision's quite good. Um, of course, everything's a use case. How is that particular use case potentially could to be a challenge we haven't addressed yet. Uh, but in general, we're really comfortable with how we can place interlock with and be safe with other devices, whether it's a robot cell, a conveyor, a pallet stand, or even another AMR. And over, over the rest of the day, this will just continue to run random missions, picking and placing from the rack. In this case, we're doing blind picking and placing. We just know where the product is. We're picking it, we're placing it, we're picking up something else and placing it. In the future, this truck will be a lot smarter and we'll be doing more adaptive uh, learning of where something is and adapting where the product is. Uh, that smartness will, will probably be unveiled within the year. Uh, we're working really well on that problem. There'll be a lot of vision uh, that will be added to the vehicle so it can perceive the space much better than we currently can. And if you think about an automated forklift, the big challenge is really getting even close to what a human can do on a forklift because humans are amazing the way we can adapt and learn and and you know uh, overcome what's going on in the environment so being able to build that smartness in the truck is a long journey ahead of us it won't be there overnight so we need to start with the simple mundane processes that are that are more easily done then over time we'll see this truck get smarter and smarter and gain in its ability to do more of the things that are needed out in the industry. All right, I want to thank everyone so much. Super excited. Love to talk with you in person. Feel free to come up and talk with anybody in our booth. Uh, hope you have a great show and see a lot of great things and learn a lot while you're here. Thanks, everyone.